Hello friends, Yossi here. How are you? Today we're going to talk about assignments. What are assignments? I'm going to show you how to calculate an assignment, what, how, where to find assignments, and what kind of assignments I have for sale, okay? Let's start. This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Realtor, Mortgage Broker, Agent, Investor, Real Estate, you name it. <laughs> Bought or sold the house, renovated it, flipped it, fixed the basement, learned how to renovate, learned how to do the deals. No one's going to teach you anything of that in the school. Life teaches what no one else can. Okay, let's start. So, we're going to jump into DuckDuckGo using the Firefox browser. Thank you very much, Google. We'll take a little break from you. Um, let's zoom out here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start with Yossi Kaplan assignments. What are assignments? I want to talk to you a little bit about what's assi what is an assignment and why is it important to us as investors, Okay. If you want to know more, one of the things to do is to jump into DuckDuckGo or Google and type in Yossi Kaplan Assignments, and it'll pull on. This is a fantastic uh, search engine, by the way. It's very, very smart. I actually like it very much. Uh, and it gives you all the results here, whatever it can find. And it's actually, it's quite nice. Okay, that's what you see here. I like it. It's good. Don't know this guy. Maybe he's a Yossi Kaplan too. Uh, okay, so what's assignment? Let's say that uh, years ago, I bought a condo. Um, as an example, I'm going to use, uh, um, let me use, this is Brantford, but I'm going to use this uh, university because I do have something for sale here. So if you're interested in 488 University Avenue, which is the corner, the intersection of University and Dundas, like you can see in this building here, and it's on top of what used to be a 17-story building from the 60s, built in 1968, 50 years ago. Um, and now there's an addition of stories from the 18 to the 55, 50, 50, 55 story. Um, and people that bought in this building or other buildings in the past, and now they want to reassign the contract. I mean, they don't want to close on the unit. They just want to hand it out to someone else, and someone else will take over the unit and use it for themselves. Either live in the unit or invest or maybe even flip it further. That's, that happens too. That is called assignment is. Assignment means to reassign the contract, okay? So when I buy a property from a developer, I don't really buy the property because it doesn't exist. It's a promissory note. Um, I, the developer promises to build this beautiful building and to give me the unit, you know, unit 10 on floor 20, 500 square feet, whatever it is, and I promise to pay according to the, schedule, the deposit schedule that we've all seen, right? That's how it works. Uh, in this case, for example, and you know, there's no, you got to understand, I'm not going to put any numbers online. Uh, number one, to respect the developer. Number two, to respect the sellers. And don't forget that when you buy a unit from a developer, they're going to ask you in the contract not to publicly post it. So instead of that, what I do is I put a general post, a generic post that shows you about the building. And then if you want to do a deal in the building, you just got to give me a call and ask me, Yossi, what's available at the moment? I was just going to put like a plethora of, Bunch of floor plans, a bunch of pictures, you know, and I'm not going to tell you exactly publicly because I can't. I'm not allowed, okay? And I have very good contacts in the industry. I'm not going to burn any bridges here. We're all working together, developers, investors, and realtors, to create wealth for ourselves, okay? So somebody buys a unit, say, at 48, 488 University Avenue, Congress, but it could really be anywhere, okay? It could be uh, the townhomes in uh, Brantford that we have currently for sale via assignment and when they when it's come it, the time has come to sell them they decide they do not want to close on the unit now why wouldn't they like to close on the unit could have various reasons okay and if you look at uh, this is one of the first videos I've done actually um, <clears throat> but there are many many videos here ooh there we go so these are videos that the word assignment is mentioned somewhere in there, and some of them are concrete assignments, some of them explains how to assignment, so on and so forth. And what happens is, if you don't want to close on the unit for whatever reason, say the unit's too small for you now because you got married and had a baby, or you move into another town, you got a job, or your life situation changed. I've even acted for people who died, obviously not for them, but for their estate. And before they passed, they bought this condo, and now we have to, um, you know, no one's going to close on it for whatever reason, so it's going to sell it, and then the estate takes takes these funds. So you can learn a lot about what to deal with assignments. You want to come on assignment. This is the first I've done, my friend Randy here. I love this video. Um, 
but there's many, many more. So let's get into it, and I'm, I will give you, um, I got some calculations coming in. I'm going to get to it in a few minutes, and I'll tell you exactly how assignments are calculated and kind of give you the basics today, one-on-one, -on -one, because, you know, we're only going to spend a few minutes how to do it. Okay, so first of all, Yossi Kaplan, you want to find more information, more assignments, uh, search through my sites, yossikaplan.com, brandfordbrokers.com, urbanrealty.com, yorkvilluxuryrealestate.com. I already clicked on the assignments uh, here, and that's the assignment category, and it brings you uh, whatever is available in assignment. So, you know, Art Shop is still within the assignment. Bisha closed already. It's going to be on the market now. Econo is still very last available assignment. It's a very, very good, by the way, one of the best cons in time, my, in, my, uh, in my opinion. Uh, Madison uh, closed, uh, on and on and on, okay? So the assignment lifespan is very, very short because it starts when someone writes the contract with the developer and it ends on registration, which is called final closing. But really, we call it registration. The units are registered in the deed and they're deeded, you know, unit one registered to Mr. X and unit two to Mr. Y and so on and so forth. Okay? Now, let's say between these periods, between that the person bought, purchased the unit, really wrote the contract, gave the checks, deposit to the vendor. Vendor is a developer, okay? And the time where it's time to take possession, occupancy, you get your keys and you move into the unit, you occupy the unit, take possession of the unit. Uh, and the closing, the final closing registration, that's when you can assign, more or less. Okay, I'm, this video, by the way, I can't cover everything. I'm just going to give you the very basics, kind of the 101 today, and hopefully I can do some more. Um, obviously, if you put in the comments, good stuff, I'll, I'll try to uh, work with what you give me. And if you want to see some stuff that are for sale, um, you can look at my Twitter. Uh, you can look at the sites. You know, I post them. Now, again, I'm not going to post every single detail and send. And I may not post the actual unit number if it's um, not agree with the developer. I'm just going to give you a general idea. And then you need to call me or email me and private or can email to my mailing list. And then that's okay. Then I can uh, tell you. So if you're watching this and you are on my mailing list, which you can go to um, either uh, sign here or you can sign uh, the newsletter or, you know, any of my sites, there's a newsletter link. Um, you will get the email, and the email will tell you, hey, Joe, hello, Joanne, I got some assignments, these are the numbers, these are the prices, this is what you get, that's what you expect to pay, and I'll give you all the information, and then usually over the phone or in a meeting, face-to-face, -face, I'll tell you the rest of the info and kind of help you figure it out and help you find a plan that will help you to take it over. Now, why would someone want to sell an assignment? We said the situation has changed. It's too small. It's too large. They die. They don't have the money. They got married. They got divorced. They had a kid. You know, life happens. Why would someone like to purchase the assignment? Because, you know, they just came to town. Let's say, uh, in this case, there's a doctor or a surgeon or a lawyer or a government executive. You know, this is university. This is right by Shangri-La. Shangri-La is 180 university. This is a Dundas. Shangri-La is down in Richmond. So this is, to me, this is kind of the new Shangri-La, this building. That's why I like it so much. And it looks fantastic, by the way. Um, and you'll come up here to the 18th floor to the Sky Lobby. And then you got this Sky Club with 30,000 square feet of amenities with the pool and everything. So this is a beautiful building. So let's say you go, oh, man, you know, I can rent this unit for four or $5,000 a month to some visiting doctor or lawyer or surgeon or government executive or a computer uh, uh, executive coming to do a government job in the area, and God knows how many people that make over two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars are on this street. There are thousands of them, okay? And this building does not have that many units. I think I entered the amount of units here. There are four hundred fifty-three units. So let's say two hundred is going to be rentals, and maybe you'll get like ten or twenty assignments in the building. That's it. You know, the amount of assignments is very very small. Three percent is a lot. So if you find one of these and you can buy it, you're ahead of the curve. You're ahead of the curve because no one else can get that unit, and then you can have that unit because these are very precious units. So obviously when you buy real estate, you want to buy the best unit you can in the best location you can, um, right? Um, but nonetheless, if you can get one of these units, then you're doing really well. For example, this kind of unit, what I would do, I would furnish it and lease it to 6 or 12 months I don't really like the short-term leases myself. It's just too much headache. Um, 
But six months lease, it's usually the minimum allowed in the condo docs, in most condos in town, you can check that. Uh, 12 months, even easier. And I've leased many, many units for six and 12 months in my real estate life for four or $5,000, even 10 years ago. It's, it's you know, I've leased to um, the Blue Jays and to the hockey guy and to the doctors and the lawyers and even people that are coming from other countries to work in Canada for corporation or government. You know, I've worked with everyone. Uh, everyone needs a place to live and you'd be surprised what people are willing to pay for a good location for a unit that is not a hotel. Because who wants to live in a hotel for six or 12 months? This is depressing. So this is beautiful, amenities, all is good. You know, you got a million food delivery services, anything you need is right here. And if you're a doctor on call or a surgeon, and you go in and you're doing like a 10 hour uh, surgery, and then before and after, you know, you're basically working shifts of 20 hours, you're gonna crawl home and crash. And that's worth every dollar. And besides, most of the units, most of these units in this area are paid for by the companies. So I've done a lot of deals with the sports companies. You know, the, the actual person that you probably know if I talk, I'm not going to tell you the names, but if you knew the names, you go, oh, yeah, I saw this guy on TV, uh, this guy's from the baseball, the hockey or whatever. They never pay for it. I literally get a letter from the Blue Jays, and the Blue Jays will sign the contract. Or sometimes the hospital or the university uh, you know, this is University Health Network, UHN here. Um, they will give you the contract in many ways. So it's very good. It's very secure. It cannot get better than that. So now let's talk about where you find the assignments. And then let's talk about the numbers, the economics of assignments. And I have those numbers ready for you, okay? So first of all, where do we find these assignments, okay? So most of buildings in town are selling out. The reason, and also outside of downtown also outside of toronto hamilton selling out brentford selling out kitchener guelph waterloo kw and guelph selling out hamilton selling out everything selling out why because we don't have enough beds okay we need a million beds in canada we need half a million in, in ontario and at least three hundred thousand beds in toronto half of the families already here are divorced so they need two places for each family of you know two parents and one or two child's children um it just, it just goes on and on. We have, we have natural population. We have crazy immigration to Canada. Uh, the government now, I saw in the paper, they want to bring a million immigrants to, uh, to Canada in the next three years. That's about 350,000 immigration immigrants a year. That's about 1,000 immigrants every single day, seven days a week for the next three years. They need a place. And trust me, those people, I'm an immigrant myself. I had to go through all the process. And it took years, and they look at your bank accounts. They want to know how much money you have. They want to know everything about you. You know, they're not going to let an immigrant come in unless you got You can show off that you can actually support yourself, and you have the smarts or the university degree or whatever it is to um, to be here and not to be a burden on the local economy. The other way, they want you to bring your money and invest it. That's why you're seeing a lot of uh, first-generation immigrants buying real estate because they bring the money and they don't have a business. They don't know the local, their language is not that great. My English sucked when I came to Canada. It was, it was a real learning curve for me, culturally, language, everything, even the food's different. So what are you going to do? You're going to go work in some job and you try to get some real estate and that's what immigrants do, okay? So... Uh, scout condos, we have a few units still left in the 400s. It's a phenomenal deal. I highly recommend it. They come with an assignment clause, okay? So if you need to flip it, that's okay. Stockyards, district, we still have a few unit, units here. Um, Two-year rental guarantee, two-year property management, and free assignment. What does free assignment means? It means that you can buy this unit. You're really becoming an investor with a developer. You hold on to the unit, and then in two or three years from now, before it's ready, release it to the market. Call Yossi. Yossi, I want to flip. We'll do the numbers. We'll sit together. I'll tell you what the market is, what it's worth. I'll know more or less how many people you're competing with and we'll devise a plan to sell your units, okay? Um, so I think that makes sense. And I've, I've went through this graph before. They're just not enough. 0 0.7, that means that 7 out of 1,000 units are, are available. And a lot of these units suck. You know, they're just not good. Don't forget, a lot of the little condos are not well designed. So if you can find a good, well designed unit, then you're doing great, okay? So, for example... If you wanted to buy these units, they are 495. 
on these, the deposits are $35,000, which is very, very low, but we designed this way so people can take them over because these are for end users. So our group invested in a bunch of these townhomes, and now we're going to flip a few and save a few, you know, whatever deals we make, but some of them will flip via assignment because we had the uh, agreement, the paper from the developer, and the understanding that this is what we're doing. So if we flip them, we flip them, and if we want to close them, we close them, they're going to rent them or move in ourselves uh, to these lovely units. So you can see here, this is full information um, with the flow plans and everything. It's a beautiful, beautiful project. This developer is fantastic. I have such high expectations, such good feel about this developer called Befco Homes, okay? Um, I think I've seen what this guy has done before, and I think this guy will do a phenomenal job, and I'm very, very happy for anyone that's going to end up here, okay? Um, this is uh, AmexCon. This is going to be phenomenal. If you read the uh, media that came out for these units, they're really made condos designed for living, and once you look at the plans for university, and they have one, two, and three bedrooms, these are great plans. These are not your typical crappy little Toronto plans, but these are actually beautiful plans. Look at these balconies, look at the light, the design is good, you know, the lines are nice and straight and clear. No wasted space, very, very smart. This is how every single floor plan should be in Toronto, my friends. There's a lot of crazy floor plans, I'm not going to get into it now. And here, I just love to do it, this is live, you can see here. Um, this is the last time Google took the picture. Sometimes they tell you when, maybe you got to go... Uh, but here it is. It's a gorgeous building. So that's the existing one. And here it's been uh, uh, added 30-some uh, stories from 18 to 55. Pretty good and amazing engineering. Okay. If I go to Yorkville Luxury Real Estate, um, I review here various buildings. Remember, most of these buildings you buy, they'll come with an assignment clause. Uh, like Kingsway, I still have units here at 850 a foot, more or less. Uh, and and uh, those that already purchased and now you're trying to flip them you can you can retain them buy them like our job by way of assignment so if the condo is sold out but you want to get a unit there because you want to be at our shop you want to be at uh at uh young and eglinton because you work there you like the area whatever it is you think this is like the next big thing go do it i'll find you an assignment there okay great uh you already know my twitter Twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan. You already know my YouTube. Thank you very much. There's like daily signups. You know, you got to start small. You start at absolutely zero and it grows every day. And I think the reason it grows every day because people realize that I just give very, very good value. This is no joke. This is a lot of money at hand here. There's really nothing under half a million dollars or $400,000. These are investments that are going for 20 and 30 years. These are people's pensions because you're not going to get any pensions, okay? I don't care where you work. None of us will have pensions. But we can buy apartments, condos, houses, maybe the Niagara, for example. That was a really good one. Uh, Niagara. And still a few, the, the larger units exist, and you can get an assignment there too. Okay? Most of the condos today, you can get an assignment clause, which is really good. All right. So now let's get to the nitty-gritty, and I'm going to give you a bit of uh, pricing and explain to you how to work it, okay? Uh, any questions? The best way to reach me is the contact right here, right here, the contact. Here's the phone number, okay? Here's the contact right here. Just go to this page, fill the form, or call this number. This is the office number. It's going to give me a message, and then I'll pick up the phone and call you back. You can also leave a, a voicemail at that number, and I'll get the voicemail on my phone, and I can call you back, okay? But the easiest thing for me, of course, if you fill the form, because I can, from my phone, just, boom, call you right back, because I get that number in my phone, okay? And just to remind you, friends, that all these links at the bottom of all my websites are programmed in that way that when you click on any of these links, they go directly into the MLS system, and they're going to give you a direct search. So if you want to go uh, Yorkville, which I just clicked, it's going to go to the Yorkville page. And then, look, this is new by latest listing. So they just took this picture. And that's what latest at Yorkville. If you want to see the most expensive at Yorkville, that's always fun. And these, these are uh, uh, cut condos only, but you can change in the filter if you want. Okay? Uh, you can add the houses. But right now, this is how I had it pre-made for the site. 
and you can see what's going on. And just for kicks, what's the cheapest thing in uh, Yorkville right now? 914, yeah. Okay, that's a, that's an older building, but I've been there. It's all right. 429.9. Okay, 450 for those studio. It's still good. It's still good. It's still a good crash pad. All right. I'm going to go in the numbers now. You guys ready? Okay. So <clears throat> let's, see the, or let's say the original price. Now, this is not a specific unit. This is just a made these numbers up like we used to do in math class. So it's just easy and everything kind of works together and it's not too much calculation. But let's say somebody bought this unit for $450,000 a few years ago, okay, three or four years ago. Um, it takes a year to build, it takes a year to dig in the ground, and it takes two years to put the building together. So, you know, three or four years later and we have a building ready. The contract was signed for $450,000. And in this case, this is just an example, it could be anything really. Deposits pay with $90,000, which make to 20% of the 450. Why am I saying 20% here? Because I'm assuming this is just a game, and in this game, in this example, in this, in this, uh, in this, uh, what do we call it? School um, case, work case, or something like that. Uh, <laughs> they pay 20%, and then the developer said, "I want 1% more in occupancy." So 21%, the developer goes, "Okay, you know, it's a lot easier to qualify for 79, 80% mortgage than less." Plus. Developer sh uh, shows that you put 20% down, you go, that's pretty good. It'll be easy for you to get the mortgage later. Okay? That's a noise here, but whatever. So your total deposit at occupancy would be 94.5, the 90,000 you paid so far. So it'll be $5,000 uh, when you sign the agreement, and then 5% less than 5,000, 30 days. And then in this case, you have three more five percenters. Usually it'll be something like 90 days, 180 days, one year, whatever it is. Okay. So in this case, it's 20%. Sometimes you deposit at 15 or 10 or even five. This example is 20 and occupancy 1%. So you total deposit 21%, 94.5. That means that the mortgage required is 79% of the original price for 50. That's 355, 500. And the cost of the assignment, the difference between the current price, the asking price, 600, to the original price, 450, is 150. Yeah? Okay, easy. So, <clears throat> now let's see what do I have to pay and in what way in order to take over the assignment. So now we're going to look. This was more or less the seller, the original buyer, but now it becomes the seller, the assignee, and now the assignor buying the assignment and what are they going to pay okay so in this case um and this is all you understand this is negotiable there's no rules you know it's not a law it's whatever you negotiate now 10 years ago when i was doing it we did we did a little differently uh then it changed now we're doing different again so it's not like because yossi said on the video this is how yossi does it every assignment is going to be like it no get out of your head uh, you need to be investors, you need to understand, you can negotiate these things. So when I go to do an assignment, either on behalf of the seller of the assignment or the buyer of the assignment, I negotiate the best deal possible for both sides so the seller feels safe that they receive enough money to know and, of course, uh, assurances that the buyer of the assignment can close and the buyer feels safe that, you know, they're putting enough cash and they're going to get the unit, Okay. The idea here is to transact, is to come to an agreement, a win-win situation. I got the unit and got my money back and some profit, and I obtained the unit that I couldn't get before because it was sold out, or I was in the country, or I wasn't ready to buy, whatever it is. So, in this case, the buyer of the assignment will match the deposits. So, they'll put the 20, original 20% down, which is 90000 and then the difference, which is the, the, the profit or the cost of assignment, one fifty. And in this case, we'll say upon assignment by vendor. What it means is when the vendor, the developer, when they agree to transfer, to transfer the agreement, to reassign the agreement from the original purchaser to you, the buyer of the assignment, you agree, according to this one, this schedule, to pay the seller of the assignment another 150 Okay? And the original deposit of 90 stays with the vendor, stays with the developer, and that 90000 goes to our company in the trust account. Just like when you buy a house, you put the deposit to the seller's realtor's trust account. Okay, 
not to me personally, but to Search Realty Corp. Trust account, okay? Agents, realtors, we can actually access these accounts. I don't even know the number of that account because in order to make sure that we do not touch any money, it's done at the office by the admin staff and, and uh, staff, and that's it, okay? And 4,500 on occupancy because that's that 1%. So let's let's summarize. Ninety thousand with the offer to match the deposit. One fifty when the vendor agrees to pass the assignment over to reassign the contract. And of course, the vendor is still owed by the original contract forty five hundred. Okay. Now another note: and assignments is a huge topic. I'm not going to cover everything today, but leave the comments and the questions. I'll answer in the comments or make another video if, if there's a lot of information uh, uh, to send you. But remember that when you take in over the assignment, you actually taking whatever said in the contract. I got a pile of them right here. Um, and what it means, it means that you cannot change the contract, okay? Um, if they already selected the, the finishes and the colors and the tiles and the floor, it is what it is. And if there's any specials or upgrades or whatever, it is what it is. You're taking it over the way it is. You cannot change anything in it. If you don't like it, don't buy it because this is already done deal. It was signed. It is sold as is. Just like when you buy a resale condo, you can't change the color of the kitchen because the kitchen's been installed. All right? So your takeover amount is 244500 which is the 90 plus 150 plus 45. That gives you 244500 And then the mortgage amount is 79% uh, of the original price, and the total is 600 I just did this like we used to do in grade 8 math in class to show you that this whole thing come back to the right number. So we started with a six, we broke it down, and then we put it back together to arrive back at the six. Okay, pretty good. I'm gonna also tell you a secret. I was never good at math, okay? My math teachers were not good. I just couldn't get it. And this is very, very simple stuff, okay? This is simple algebra. I gotta tell you, if you have a problem with the math, call me, I'll show you very simply and logically how to do it. You know, sometimes um, our teachers, they mean well, but we just don't connect with them, and we need teachers that we can connect, and then we can learn and understand better. Okay, so to recap, we sell the assignment 600. It costs us 450. Our property is 150. You're gonna buy the assignment. You're gonna match up all the deposits. You're gonna pay the vendor if anything is still owed. In this case, 1% occupancy. Sometimes more, sometimes none. So it comes to the total deposit 21%. The rest is mortgage. I didn't mention, but you're gonna the vendor will want to see that you can actually pay the mortgage. So you're gonna bring a letter from your uh, banker or mortgage broker that you have the ability to do so. If you need these letters, we'll do it for you at Search Mortgage. So we have Search Realty for the real estate transaction, and Search Mortgage for the mortgage and the loans and the finance. Uh, I'm uh, licensed for both real estate agent and mortgage agents. I'll, I'll help you. I don't do the mortgages myself just because I'm so busy, but I will oversee it for you and I'll sign you one of the guys or ladies at the office. Okay? And in this case, it's a big cash deal. It's quarter million dollars cash, more or less, two, four, four, five. Now you'll see what do you do if I don't have two hundred fifty thousand dollars but I have say hundred and twenty. Okay. Hundred and twenty is enough to cover your deposit and the occupancy. Uh, so there'll be 94.5, and then you got about 25,500 exactly um, out of the cost of the assignment. So sometimes the seller, the seller of the assignment, the original purchaser, will say, you know what, that's okay, give me the 125, we'll do the deal at 125, keep the fire for the occupancy, as long as you show me that you can close on the unit and you can get a mortgage for the entire amount for the 600 because now. It can be assessed for more because time has passed and values have risen, and you can get a larger mortgage. And then on closing, on registration, the lawyer for the buyer of the assignment will redirect the difference in the amount to the lawyer of the seller of the assignment. Complex? I don't think so, but first time probably, second time not anymore. But I'll say it one more time because I've done it many times and it's successful. If you don't have quarter million dollars, but say you have 120. Okay, you're going to match the deposits, make sure you have enough money to close on the property, put the occupancy, all the closing costs involved, and if that's all based on that you're going to get a mortgage for the for, for not for the 3555 but for the 600 less whatever you got, 125. So that will cover the mortgage required for the vendor and the rest of the cost of the assignment which on registration, on final closing, will be redirected by the lawyers back to the seller, okay?
So that's also possible. Not everything has to be upfront cash. I know there's a lot of upfront cash deals these days, but the amount of cash you you see is around $200,000. Why? Because a lot of properties are bought in the 400 are now selling 150,000 more. So this is a typical case, not a specific case, but a typical. Now this guy made you know 30% on the overall, but actually they made a lot more because they only put 90 down and um, they're taking out 150. So they almost doubled the investment in you know, three years. This is phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. But if someone doesn't have the cash but has the ability to pay, they can say, look, I'll give you 120 now. I can show you, I can guarantee you, prove to you that I can close on this unit. And then on closing, I'll give you the rest. Do you agree to do this deal? And both parties must agree, okay? Again, there are no rules how to do an assignment. You just do the math and then you have to discuss and agree on the schedule. That's when you negotiate. That's when you need to have an experienced real estate agent to help you to structure this deal, okay? And I got to tell you guys, I work with a lot of lawyers too, and not all the lawyers understand this and understand the subtleties of doing an assignment. So um, the good thing is that I'm here and I can help you, and I'll help you do this. So any of these properties you buy, almost every property these days have an assignment clause, which means the builder... The vendor will allow you to reassign your contract. Uh, maybe they need to be 80 or 90% sold, or maybe there's you know a cost of the assignment. Sometimes there isn't. It's really wide. Again, there are no rules. Open your mind, not because your friend didn't assign a certain way. It must be the same. That's not investing. That's monkey business. That's copying. Don't copy. Be original. Be a real investor, and then you can actually start making real money. Okay? So... Uh, these assignments here, we're only asking $35,000. So where's the rest of the four sixty? That's going to come from your own sources, cash plus mortgage, okay? In this case, the seller of the assignment is agreeing for a very small deposit as long as you can prove to them and the vendor that you have the ability to close. Because the seller is not going to hand you over the contract that you can't close on. That's going to cause, because that's going to come back to the vet, to the seller and, of course, the vendor, everyone's going to be in trouble. We don't do that. You know, guys, I've never even once in my entire career had an assignment deal that fell because of that. Not once. You know why? We closed. We have a 100% close ratio. I forgot about that. Because I'm like, I'm, yeah, yeah, of course. 100% close ratio. You know why? Because we don't take any chances. Because we just do the numbers and we make sure everything makes sense. If I find a buyer that has big eyes, but the pockets are not big enough, I'll find them a property they can afford, okay? And if I find a buyer that really wants the unit and can afford it, we'll do the deal, okay? So that's what I got for you today, guys. This is very, very basic one-on-one -on -one assignments. Current hot, hot assignments are at 488. Let me go back there because the medium is the message. I lost my... Uh... Oh, it's right here. Here we go. Okay, VPN's a little slower, but it's safer. Uh, for Age University, we have some assignments here. Stockyards, if you buy, you get an assignment clause. Uh, review of the real estate market. Niagara, you get an assignment clause. Okay. Junction House, you get an assignment clause. Assignment sales, so on and so forth. You get an assignment clause, you get an assignment cl clause. Here we buy an assignment because it's already finished. Okay, so on and so on. There's many, many, many of these. So that's what assignment is. If you want to know more, leave a comment or ask me a question. I'll do my best to help you the best I can. Um, I got a lot of agents call me, brokers call me, lawyers call me. It's okay. It's totally fine. We're all in this together. I call other people with questions all the time. I'm happy to share my knowledge with you. I don't care if we're doing business or not. I'll just talk to you because we're building a network of investors and people that love real estate and people that love to do good business. Also looking for an Ottawa agent. If you know anyone good, let me know. Um, and that's it. We're just doing good work here and we're having a great time and we're staying warm in this crazy winter. Um, that's all I got for today. Enjoy. Good luck. Success. Yossi out.